Okay, everyone, today we're talking about my 1967 Plymouth Barracuda E Code 273 Commando car that I have for sale. I usually do one of these a year, and as most of you know who follow me, um, I do a tremendous job on these cars. I've been doing it for about 40 years, and uh, I only do Mopars. In fact, some of my very best friends are people who, people who have bought my cars. Uh, last year I did a uh, 440 six-pack uh, Cuda. It was a clone car. Uh, and anyway, these people have become good friends. But this car is unique. There was only 528 of these built. I've got it running right now. I put the air cleaner lid on the ground so uh, you can see the detail in the engine bay. But as we go around this car, I want you to notice the detail on the vehicle. It is a true PP1 red uh, E-code convertible with a 273. So the E-code is the commando version. As you can see, there's the, the exhaust. And I think these are so cool. This is, this is the what's called the commando high flow um, single exhaust. As you can see, there's a cutout for it right there in the balance. And if you ever see these cars with dual exhaust on them, then you have to question how much of the rest of the car has been butchered up. But uh, this, is a, this is a real red with white interior convertible Barracuda. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off, but I wanted to hear the engine running because these cars actually came with solid lifters. And to get them to run this quiet, it's not really a chore. It's uh, it's just uh, you have you got to know what you're doing, and you always want to set the, the valve lash on these cars when they're cold, never when they're hot. And now that's the people always try to do it when they're hot, but if you know what the setting is, cold, that's how you get them to run this good. And they're actually really spunky little motors. Okay, so let's turn off the uh, engine and talk a little bit about the car. Okay, so it's a real console car. It's a rally dash car. The steering wheel is absolutely beautiful. Um, it has a hairline crack in it right there. And that's the only reason um, why I wrapped it. But it's in, in extremely good condition. The gauge cluster was just redone by uh, Redline Gauges in California. Uh, completely rebuilt, speedometer, everything. Um, okay, so looking at this car, there were 528 of these built. Some of the strong points about this car is the provenance. We know exactly where this car has been. I'm gonna read this to you because I've been taking it to car shows this summer and it just really, what well, few there are with COVID-19. But this is a 1967 Plymouth Barracuda. It is an E-code convertible. There was only 528 of them ever built. Redesigned for 1967, the second generation Barracuda sold 62,534 copies that year. This Barracuda got the E-code Commando package, which is really cool. And I'll show you on the fender, there's a Commando tag on the fender. Um, it came with, um, with a commando package, which is the high winding version of the 273 V8. It came with a forged crank, forged crank, forged rod, high lift cam, solid lifters. Okay, this is 1967. Chrysler was really on their game. 10.5 to 1 compression and a four barrel carburetor. This car also got Kelsey Hayes front disc brakes and torque boxes built right into the subframe. This car got torque boxes because it's an automatic. I mean, because it's a convertible. You know, you, Mo, you Mopar guys will know that Chrysler did that with all convertibles, which makes these cars really fun to uh, beef up because they'll handle it. Um, but this car is all stock. Um, this car got Kelsey Hayes discs, subframe connectors. Plymouth only built 528 of these E-code convertibles in 1967, making this Barracuda a rare fish. The build date on it is Tuesday, May, tw May 2nd, 1967. At the Hamtramck plant, the engine is a Chrysler Commando 273 High Performance V8. The exhaust is a Chrysler Commando High Flow Single Exhaust. Here again, a really cool detail on these cars is that High Flow Single Exhaust. And this exhaust on this car, 
I got it from um, Accurate Exhaust. It's factory right down to the clamps. The paint is it's a real PP1 uh, red car with a white white top and the white stripes. The interior is a rally dash with white bucket center console. The white stripes on this car, you're going to see there's 68 stripes, I know. The 67 stripe was the longitudinal stripe that came down the body. That's what this car came with, according to the fender tag. The interior, it's a rally dash, white buckets, center console. And at 2,840 pounds, these cars really fly. And this car really does run good for being a stock 273. You get it up around 4,000, 5,000 RPMs, and it just really, really runs hard. Okay, this is the boot for the, for the convertible top. And this is probably the best thing about this car, and the reason why we're asking all the money for it is because this is a turnkey car. There's nothing you need to do to this car. It's not a project. And these cars can be a project, or they can be a done car. I have a, a, a pickleball court next door, and these girls are over there screaming. This book is everything that's ever been done to this car. The whole restoration. It was restored in 2011. This is what I did just now to freshen it up. Um, you can see this, all this stuff. But in this book is every receipt going back to the original um, restoration. It's got, uh, this is my correspondent with Dave Weiss uh, talking about how many were actually built. Dave actually thinks there's about 500. But when we did the math, there's 528 based on the number of convertibles and ecos that were made. Everything in here is, this book is amazing. If you want to know anything about this car, here it is, because there's about $40,000 worth of receipts in this book. And this is the one way I can tell if a car has been cared for and if somebody really, you know, really tried to do it right, is if there's provenance like this and where I have somebody's actual records on the car. I mean, look at this. In fact, in the back of this car, of this thing, is a DVD that has over 500 pictures of how the car was found and how it was restored. And it's all sitting there in that book. And it's uh, really, really cool to have that stuff. As you can see, the car is in great shape. There's a spare in the, in the, uh, in the spare tire well. And the jack is there. It's just really a cool car. I always leave the key in the trunk. So I'm always getting in and out of those things. Okay, so back to uh, what, I, what I mean when I say turnkey and not a project car. If any of you have ever owned these uh, vintage cars, you know they're a nightmare um, for having to need to have, you know, be tinkered with. This car has no leaks. Let's start with the fuel. The trunk, uh, under the trunk is the fuel tank and the, there's a fuel filler neck gasket that always leaks. The sending unit gasket always leaks. These are brand new. All the lines are brand new. There's receipts in there from inline tube for the whole car. The other things that leak on these cars are, well, there's four fluids that always leak. Let's start with the, uh, we did the fuel. There are no fuel leaks on this car. This car is completely dry underneath every time I park it, which means that the rear main seal does not leak on the engine and they always leak. The, um, the rear main seal, the front seal doesn't leak, the pan gasket doesn't leak, the oil, uh, the oil in this car stays in the car like it's supposed to stay in the car. I, like, I took that off so you can see the detail. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so no oil leaks, no transmission fluid leaks. The transmission fluid always leaks at the same places. It leaks, is, it leaks at the fuel at the uh, filler tube. There's a grommet that goes, a uh, gasket goes on the filler tube. And uh, that's where also where you check the oil, the dipstick. That leaks. They also leak around the pan gasket. They also leak. The notorious leak for Mopar is the speedometer gear drive. There's two seals in there. There's a, there's a uh, O-ring. And then there's a seal that goes on the spindle. And the trick is to put the seal on the spindle and stack two of them. So there's no leaks on the, in the transmission. There are no leaks in the radiator fluid. None at all. So nothing on this car leaks. Um, so let's see, I've covered that. Battery, no leaks there, no leaks there. 
no leaks on the um, uh, master cylinder because it's brand new. So let's talk about the details here. This has vintage air. And when you see vintage air, sometimes you think, well, that's an upgrade I don't know if I'd like. But yeah, no, you like the vintage air because it blows cold, cold air. This is a brand new system and everything is brand new and it, it blows beautifully cold. The um, master cylinder is brand new on this car. All of the wiring harnesses to the front engine compartment are brand new. The bulkhead connector was in really good shape. I didn't need to replace that. They're brand new. This radiator was restored by Glenray Radiator. It has the date codes on it. It's original to the car. It's the 112th day of 1967. Original radiator, restored concourse. The fan is original to the car. The, um, the carburetor is original to the car. You see the date codes on it? Because I sent this back to Scott Smith at Harms Auto for any of those of you who follow graveyard cars or any of the Mopar forums, Scott is the best. The only thing I don't like about this car is after it sits, for some reason it loads up and you get a pretty good puff of white smoke. Um, but there's the engine is the engine's freshly rebuilt, compression's perfect. So other than that, I would run this carburetor. Um, and if you don't like, it, it is a vintage carburetor and it will load up but it is absolutely perfectly restored and it runs great other than that little puff of smoke when you first start it up and it's gas it's not oil um, that carburetor is absolutely runs down the road beautifully and i'm telling you the car gets great gas mileage um, the distributor is brand new i have the original one it comes with the car all the linkage is original these exhaust manifolds are original to the car, date code correct. Both of them are February 1967. This car was produced in May of 1967. And here is the uh, radiator support. Uh, I always rub those off so you can see. Also on the trunk lip, um, that body number is there. Okay, so back to the originality of the car. So when the car came down, um, it was uh, everything on this car other than the block. The block is a 1969 273 block. And um, it's just uh, all very original. Heads are original, the, in, the valve covers are original. Like I said, the exhaust manifolds are original, the radiator's original. The steering gear was sent back to Cardone and it was upgraded with a uh, stage two. Um, it, the steering on this car is absolutely beautiful. Nothing leaks. Okay, so I went over the transmission, the engine, the steering fluid, uh, the power steering fluid. There are no leaks on this car, and that's, but there are bugs. I had the car out today and took it for a drive. Okay, so there you go. 1967. E-Code Barracuda. Um, a couple of things really quick. The top operates perfectly. It's a little slow going up, but it comes down really, really fast. And as it's coming up, I want you to look at the bright work on it. Those are brand new. And all this is brand new up in here. Okay, so I'm not gonna close it all the way, but I want, because I want you to see some of this bright work in here. All really, really good. Gauge cluster, freshly restored. Let me show you how the vintage air works. The vintage air, the way this works is when this lever is all the way over, that's the heat. Warmer or colder. And you've got your controls right here. Okay, so it blows the heat. Vintage air has a brand new heater box that comes with vintage air and it's all upgraded stuff. And the best thing about this car, and I didn't, I'm not really a real fan of, of aftermarket parts on these vintage cars, but this I am. Because when you put it into the heat position, in fact, let me turn this on, you'll hear it. Hear that click? Right there? That turned on the compressor. And so what happens is when the compressor comes on, you have air conditioning. Again, warmer or colder, and it blows really, really, really cold air here. And there are two air ducts underneath the dash that blow down on your feet. And this thing gets frigid fast. It also has 
an upgraded radio. So this is the original radio to the car, or a vintage Chry uh, Chrysler radio, Plymouth radio. But if you if you toggle this, then you go to FM, and you have FM and AM, and you also have a, an auxiliary jack here for your headphones. So um, nice little upgrades to the car, and like I said, everything in this car is is really done nice. Let me go ahead and retract that top again. I want you to see how fast this thing retracts. It's a really cool car. So. There we go. Doors shut good, they line up. The car was really, really meticulously restored again. Doors shut good. They all line up. Again, 68 stripes, I know. So don't call me and tell me it has 68 stripes on it. I just think that's just an awesome setup. Okay, so on the wheels and tires, let's talk about those really quick. <clears throat> let's let the FedEx guy go by first. Okay, the wheels and tires on this car are the BFG uh, tires are brand new. They don't even have 100 miles on them. And I've been doing this for a long time. And when it comes to A-body Mopars, whether it's a Duster, Dart, Demon, A-body Barracudas, the perfect stagger on these cars, in my opinion, where it doesn't overwhelm the wheel wells of the car and whatnot, is 245-60-15s on the rear, 225-60-15s on the front. And I think it's the perfect stagger, and I, I think you would agree. Um, and uh, the, uh, the wheels are the new Wheel of Antique series. Um, they're the Chrome Chrysler Rallies. Now, people, I've never had anybody say, oh, you put Chrysler Rallies on a 67. They didn't come with Chrysler Rallies. Well, they did in 70, and, but Chrysler never did Chrome Rallies either. So these, this car just has a really cool set of Chrysler rallies on it, and uh, I've have had, had nothing but compliments on those wheels. And again, the stagger is just perfect. As you can see, it doesn't overwhelm the wheel well. So many guys try to put 275, 60, 15s underneath these, and they just don't fit. And the 255s are a little bit too much, but the 245s are perfect, as are the 225s in the front. This car has drum brakes in the rear, and it has disc brakes in the front, as you can see. And they are Kelsey Hayes discs. There's the air cleaner lid for the car. And I think I've covered about everything I can on this car. Again, no expense spared on the restoration. Um, and it's a turnkey car. There's really nothing you have to do. Even that wiper motor is original to the car. I think the date code is the 117th day of 1967. Um, it's been upgraded with electronic ignition, as you can see. The car does not overheat. It has two, it has 323 rear gears in it. Goes down the road, 75 miles an hour at 2,800, 3,000 RPMs. Um, it's just really, did I say 80 miles an hour? 70 miles an hour, 70, 75 miles an hour is what, what it goes down the road. Um, Everything in the car has been redone, including the front suspension. I just did the upper and lower ball joints, fresh alignment, the tie rods, the idler arm. It's all brand new. The, uh, the power steering, again, upgraded Cardone internals, but it's the original steering, you know, steering gear to the car. Um, again, I've just got all new brand new lines, inline tube. I'm trying to think of everything and try to keep this under 20 minutes. Brand new molded uh, pad, which this car came with that and it came undercoating. Okay, that's one thing. The underneath of this car is absolutely rust free. There is no rust on the underside of this car. And when you get the car, you can go through it with a fine tooth comb. There might be a little, little surface rust here and there, but there's no rust anywhere. Um, it's just really a sound little car. And uh, if you have any questions, you can give me a call. My name is Dave. The phone number is area code 801-372-0220.
Again, my name is Dave, 801-372-0220. The best way to get a hold of me is to send me a text message and tell me I'm interested in the car. Because I get a lot of phone calls that aren't, that are, you know, telemarketing calls. And so um, just make sure you text me that and I will be happy to return your call, answer any questions you have. Like I said, I usually do one of these a year and I have some of my best friends or people I've sold cars to over the years. I did a, um, last year I did a 70 Cuda uh, where they had a Trimic 5 speed in it. Great, great uh, car. I sold that to Brad Nash in, in, uh, in Georgia. And then before that I did a, I've done a number of cars. I did a 70 Duster. I've done, um, when I say done them, I get them that are basically restored, but then I, then I sanitize them. I chase all the bugs out of them, all the rattles out of them. I make sure they don't wander side to side, that they go straight down the road, that the steering is right, that the, there are problems, that there are no leaks. I just chase them out. I call it fetter them out. I get them, get them to the point where I could actually be proud to uh, own it myself long term. And I do it as a hobby. Um, I've had many of these over the years. So, again, give me a call. My name's Dave, 801-372-0220. Thanks for looking at this beautiful E-Code Commando. Let me show you the Commando. There it is right there. And that calls out on both fenders. There it is right there. E-Code Commando. Give me a call if you have any questions. 801 Thanks for watching 22 minutes of video.